right. Well, good morning, church. How's everybody doing? We have a great morning. All right, all right. Well, it's good to see you. My name is Pastor Andy. I'm the lead pastor here at High Rock Church of Lexington. I want to thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us, and we just hope everybody's enjoying this nice morning. It is a beautiful morning. I thought it was going to be a little bit cooler than it, you know, than it was, so, I, so I'm burning up right now, but it's okay. It's all good. So anyway, so we are in the middle of a series called God is My Blank. All right, and basically what we're doing, we're looking at different ways God reveals himself in our lives and different uh, names of God, all right? So, uh, and we're trying to think of things that we may not usually think about, okay? So the first week, we talked about God is my rest. Last week, we learned what it meant to say that God is my horn. Next week, we have a special message. Uh, it's a surprise, all right, so we'll figure out what that thing sitting over in the corner is, all right, so you got to come here to hear the message. But this week, we're going to talk about God is my banner. God is my banner. So what does that mean for us today? All right, so we're going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter 17, the book of Exodus, chapter 17. And, you know, we've been in Exodus this whole series, and that's for a reason. And we're going to figure that out next week. All right, we're going to look at why these names of God are coming a lot through the book of Exodus in the time where Israel is where they're at. So right now, Israel, they were slaves of Egypt for over 400 years. God raised up a leader named Moses. So Moses went and he led them to freedom from Egypt. All right, so they crossed the Red Sea. They went into the wilderness. So now they've been in the wilderness for at least a few weeks, if not a few months. All right, and so now they're in the wilderness in the book of Exodus, chapter 17, starting in verse 8. We're going to read what happens to them next. And it says, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to the fight and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. All right, so we're going to stop there. So now we see this is, this is the only place in Scripture where we see the name of God, the Lord is my banner, but we see to God being our banner referred in other parts of Scripture. All right, so here Moses made, uh, builds his altar. So it's interesting the situation that's happening. So here they are. They're free from slavery. All right. So now they're walking through the wilderness, going to the promised land. All right. They've been promised the promised land, but they're not there yet. They have to go through the wilderness. And so they're there, and these Amalekites start attacking the Israelites. Now, the Amalekites, they are descendants of Esau. And they are a very powerful, uh, uh, they are a very powerful uh tribe okay they're a tribe they don't have a homeland okay they're nomads a very powerful nomadic tribe and where they're at now is actually a war zone so it's known for that okay so where they're traveling through now is a war zone so they go up against the Amalekites the descendants of Esau and this isn't the only time they see the Amalekites this is a war that's going on throughout the Bible but eventually God does just basically eradicate their name from history all right, so God does eventually just defeat them all the way. So here they are. They're, they're fighting these Amalekites. And the thing about it is, is that they're not ready for a battle. 
Okay, they're not ready for a battle. They just left slavery. They're tired. They're worn out. They're hungry. They're thirsty. There's women. There's children. They have these possessions with them. They have armor on, but it's Egyptian armor. They have no idea how to use it, all right? So they are not battle ready at all. They don't have any type of military strategy. They don't have any commanders. Like at the last minute, Moses appoints Joshua as the general and says, go take them in the battle, all right? So they don't have this military strategy. They're not battle ready at all. So God comes up with this plan that says, hey, look, if you go hold up a stick, you'll win. God says, go, go to the top of the hill and hold up that stick. Okay, now that stick was a staff given to Moses. Now, the staff came from whenever Moses was talking to God before he even went into Egypt. He, he, he said to God, you know, well, how are people going to know? How am I going to do these miracles? And God said, what's in your hand? And he had a staff. He said, well, take the staff with you. Remember last week we talked about God as our horn. One thing it means is God is our provider. So God provided what Moses needed in the moment before it happened. Moses took the staff. He trusted God. He went. So at the moment he needed it, God provided what he needed in order to win the battle. All right, so it says that Joshua, he says, Moses, if you go and you hold up that staff, while you hold it up, you'll win. But if you lower it, the Amalekites will win. No one knew that, but Aaron and Hur called on. So they said, oh, my gosh, we need to help Moses. So they pulled stones beside of them, and they held up the staff the whole fight. And while they were fighting, the staff was held up, and they won the victory. They won the victory by holding up this staff. And so Moses, after all of this, he's probably so overwhelmed with most emotion, he goes and he, and he builds this altar. Okay, this altar is probably made of wood and rock. Okay, he just builds this altar and he calls it, the Lord is my banner. And this is actually a name of God in the Bible, which is Yahweh Nisi. So now we learn that this is actually a title of God in the Bible. The Lord is my banner, Yahweh Nisi. So that's how we, God's name of this was revealed to us. So what does that mean for us today? What does it mean that God is our banner and how does it play out to our lives? All right, so we're going to go through some message points now and then we're going to see how those play out in our lives as well. So we're going to talk about the obvious one first, all right? The obvious one is remembrance, okay? Remembrance. Because a banner, see, a banner for us has a lot of meaning today, all right? We do things with banners today, but in biblical references, they were a little bit different because usually a banner was marked for a battle time, okay? Banners were more used for battle. So this is a battle scenario. This is battle significance. All right, so we see this, and uh, so I'm going to look at Exodus chapter 15. All right, we're going to back up two chapters, look at Exodus chapter 15, because when Moses sees God defeat the Egyptian army by covering them with the Red Sea, he breaks out into this song. And in the song, the first few verses, he is talking about God as our banner. He is setting up a lot of what a banner means especially for them back in the biblical time. So the first one we see here is remembrance, because that's why Moses built the altar for one, because God told him, remember this. So, God, so Moses is setting up this remembrance of, of God and what he has done. Because in Exodus chapter 15, verse 1, for this song, it says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. So God, so Moses saw God do this immaculate thing, and he claims it. Wow, that was awesome. God just defeated this Egyptian army, the most powerful army at the world on the world at that time. God eradicated them through the Red Sea. I mean, he just way took them out. So he starts singing the psalm, and, and it's things like that he needs to remember because now what we're seeing in the Bible. For the Amalekites, that's the first time that God had them in a battle. Okay, Last time the instructions were, stand there and watch me work. This time the instructions were, grab a sword and let's go to work. See, so now they're actually seeing God have them in battle. So that's, this is the first time we see that. So Moses is saying, oh my goodness. See, so Moses needs to remember that because they just saw God eradicate the Egyptian army in the middle of the sea. So now they're going into battle, and they need to remember things like that. It's the same way with us today. 
God does a lot of great things for us, but do we build an altar, so to speak? Do we set in that remembrance? Because it's so easy for God to do something for us, and it's something big. You know, like he comes through in a major way, and it's like, wow, God, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Oh, I wonder what's happening on Facebook. And then a week later, something happens. We're oh, my goodness, God, what's going to, God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Lord? I'm, I, I'm scared. I don't know what's happening. God, I didn't really mean that. I'm just letting you know. Like, like I didn't really mean that. Thank you. I'm about to say, I'm about to hold this thing up now. Yeah, let's put it back here with the horns. These seem a little bit more safe here. But, yeah, so a remembrance. Right, this altar of remembrance. Because God does great things, and so we need to be able to remember what God did so that way when the battle comes again, we can look back and say, okay, God, you've done this once. You can do it again. You can do it again. So that's the, that's the one we see now. And so now let's talk about the warlike setting of the banner. Okay, let's talk about uh, the war significance of what a banner means. The first one we're going to talk about is this, a rally point. A rally point. All right. So when an army marches in the battle, they take a banner, they pick a spot, and they set it down. And it's high and exalted for everyone to see, for everyone on that army to see, because sometimes they're going to need a rally point. Because sometimes the battle, it gets tough, it gets difficult, it gets confusing. A confusing, people get spread out, maybe they're starting to lose hope, okay? So what they need is a spot that they can come back and meet back together again. So that banner serves as a rally point. It shows, hey, look, this is where we can come to. We can gather our strength back. We can maybe form a new plan. We can try a new plan of attack. We can talk to each other. We can gather hope, right? There's all these different things. Sometimes the army needs a rally point so they can come back together and then go back into the battle and rally in the battle. So God serves as this, right? So the banner serves, and that's exactly what Moses is saying in Exodus 15, verse 2, in the first of verse 2, when he says this, The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. See, in our lives, we're going to go through battles. We're going to have tough times. And sometimes the battle gets confusing. Sometimes we get spread out. Sometimes we feel hopeless, like the victory isn't going to be ours. And so we look to God. God is our banner. God is our rally point. God is the place where we go and we gather strength. God is the place where we can go and receive his power for the battle. God can be our defense. Sometimes it's, God, I'm tired of fighting. I just need a break. I just need some defense. So now we can go to God and say, okay, God, I'm finding refuge in you. You're my strong tower. You're my shield. You're my buckler, right? You're all these things for me. I'm hiding in you because I need a defense right now. And God becomes our salvation. Salvation doesn't always mean eternal life like we think of it. In the Old Testament, salvation most of the time meant deliverance. Man, deliverance, God becomes our deliverance. We, we go to God, we hide in Him, we find strength in Him. He's our banner. We know we can run to Him, and then we see Him becoming our deliverance. Yahweh Nisi, our banner, our rally point. We can go and find strength, get a new plan of action. So when we go back in the battle, we can rally again. And so what this banner does, it starts collecting people together. So another thing a banner does is it reveals identity. It reveals identity. Because only the people on that army are going to go to that banner. Only the people who identify with that banner are going to go there to rally, to find strength. You're not going to go to your enemy's banner and try to find good, positive things. We're going to go to our banner so we can receive that. So now we're revealing our identity that God is our banner. Because in Exodus 15, chapter 2, the second half of that verse says, He is my God. And I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. 
So when we go to God, Yahweh Nisi as our banner, what we're saying is, God, you're my God. You're my rally point. I identify with you. You are my strength. You are my salvation. You are my strong point. I am going to you. And not only that, we are exalting him. We're showing, hey, world, this is who I believe in. This is where my strength comes from. The Lord is high and exalted. Because one thing about a banner, it's meant to be seen. You don't put a banner on the ground where no one can see it. You put a banner high because you want people to see it. God is meant to be seen. He is meant to be exalted. And we can exalt God whenever we claim God as our identity. We identify with him as our banner. We are exalting him to the nations, to everyone around us. So we claim, we reveal our identity with Yahweh Nisi. And it shows the world who's winning the fight. Because see, when Moses held up his staff, that was the same thing as a banner. As long as he exalted the thing God gave him to fight, he was exalting God saying, hey, look, Amalekites, check it out. This is what God gave me to fight you. This is where I stand, check it out, that's a stick, and my trust is in this. You know why? Because God said for it to be. And as long as he exalted that thing, the battle was winning. And so the crazy way that was fight, there was no doubt that God won the fight. There was no doubt that God was in charge of the fight, and God won that fight. There was no doubt who the Israelites were fighting with. Because another thing that a banner does, a banner represents a king. A banner represents a king. When they would take their banner and march into war, that's basically what they were saying. This is who we're fighting for, and this is who we're fighting with. This is my king. If you've ever heard his name, you better be scared. They went in showing what king they were fighting for and fighting with. But the good thing for us Christians, it's not so much of what king we're fighting for. It's not so much what king we're fighting with. It's more about what king is fighting for us. Marching into battle, holding up Yahweh Nisi. This is my king. This is who I'm fighting with. This is who's fighting for me. The great warrior king. Because Moses, in in verse 3, in Exodus 15 says, The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Our God, the mighty warrior. Who goes before us? Our great God, who's on our side. I can imagine Moses when he's singing this song. Because he's probably like, God, I've seen you. I've seen a lot of different parts of you. I've seen you do miracles. I've seen you be compassionate. I've seen your wisdom. But now I see your warrior skills. Wow, my God is a warrior. He just took out the Egyptian army. Wow. My God is a warrior. Because God is a warrior king, I think sometimes we forget that. Yes, God is love. Yes, God is forgiveness. God is compassionate. Jesus came petting a little lamb. Okay, yes, God is a really awesome God that we can approach at any time. But we have lost the fact that God is also a warrior. God's a warrior king. And he's never been defeated in battle. See, God is our warrior king. Like I say, sometimes it's hard to do that, uh, to see that, because we, you know, we focus so much in the modern church making sure that everything we do is okay, but we forget that God's a warrior king. And so God, he isn't scared. He isn't intimidated. He's not wondering what's going on. God is humble, and he's meek. See, meekness means power with restraint. 
Just because he can doesn't always mean that he does. Yes, God could eradicate and defeat everything, but he's not doing it right now. Why? Wisdom. God runs the universe off of wisdom. All right, so sometimes the enemy sees his meekness, and they, and they mistake his meekness for weakness. Don't do that. Sometimes we mistake his wisdom for weakness, and it's not true. You might say, well, God, I'm fighting a battle right now, and you're not doing anything. Well, there's wisdom in it. Why? Why is he not? Maybe there is a purpose. There's a plan. Maybe he's trying to teach us something. Or maybe he is fighting for us, but he's not fighting for us in the way that we think that he should. Here's the thing. God's not going to fight to keep our sin around. Okay? If we're fighting to keep our sin, God's not fighting that battle. He's trying to fight to get us out of it. So, see, he, he, he's fighting our battle, but not the way that we want. Not the way that we think that he should. But God is a warrior king, and he is fighting for us. And trust me, one day we're going to see it. Oh, we're going to see it. The next time Jesus comes back, he's coming back on a white horse with a double-edged fire sword with his host of angels that are not these little bitty babies shooting these little arrows. He's coming back, and basically he's going to start hacking away. It's judgment day. He's coming back as a warrior king to separate the sheep from the goats. And we're going to want to be underneath his banner. Right? Every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess whether we want to or not. But we already want to be that crowd already holds up his banner. Jesus, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know me, my name. I know you. I'm going with you. And then, yes, eternity will be awesome. But let me tell you, we're going to see our warrior king before we rest in his peace for eternity. So, yes, God is absolutely a warrior king. The one who hung the stars. The one that makes the sun shine. The one that has all power in the universe. That's our warrior king. So what does that mean for us today? So see, we can take Yahweh Nisi. We can take our banner. Nowadays, maybe, maybe our banner looks something like this. That's a Christian flag. We can use that as a banner. We can take that with us. God is our banner. So to finish up today, I want to go to Psalm 20 and read a couple of verses out of this. Because it shows perfectly how God can be our banner today. So in the book of Psalms, chapter 20, starting in verse 1. It says, May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. Verse 5. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know this. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. So, yes, we're going to face battles. And, yeah, God, answer us in our distress, please. I'm distressed. I'm calling out to you. I'm in a battle, Lord. Please hear me. Please hear me from your holy hill. Please hear me from your sanctuary. Please answer me. Please show attention to me. Because we do fight battles in this world. Maybe it's relational. Relationships are tough. It could be all kinds of marriage. It could be with children. It could be work. And we get into relationships, and we start feeling like it's a battle. We're going back and forth. And you know what? We get worn out and weary, and guess what? That's when the enemy comes. Just like with Israelites, when they were worn out and weary, and they were weak, that's when the strongest tribe attacked. When we're wore out and weary, that's when our enemy's going to come. And we're going to need our God. 
These relationships, man, just when you think maybe it's starting to pick up, just when you think everything's going right, man, something comes out from left field, and now we're distraught, now we're distressed, now we're ready to give up. Finances are tough. It's hard to make a dollar go where it needs to nowadays, and it's like, man, I'm trying and trying, and I barely have any money in the bank, and now something breaks down, and now here I am in this battle. Now I'm way losing the battle of finances. Of course, addictions. Man, addictions just tear our lives apart. It always has to be drugs and alcohol. Man, it could be people. It can be money. It could be video games. Whatever it is, there's things in our lives, whatever it is, that takes away from our lives but tries to tell us that it's okay, keep going. That's an addiction. And it's a battle. And every time we think we're getting out, man, here comes the enemy. It could be people just talking about us in general. People come against us, talk about us behind our back. Man, that can wear us down. And once again, when we get wore down, that's when that last thing just comes. Medical stuff. Man, it's hard to go to the doctor and get that medical report and keep going back and keep hearing the same thing over and over again. And just when we think we can't handle another one, here it comes. You know, just stress in general. Man, life is just stressful. It's just stressful. And it's always just seems like it's bombarding. You see, we get into these battles, and we need help. That's when we run to our banner. That's when we go to our rally point. That's when God sets up. See, God has set up a rally point of the cross. God has set up a rally point of the cross where Jesus says, hey, look, you can come here. This is where we go. This is where we gather our strength. This is where we talk to our king. This is where we find new direction. This is where we surrender. This is where we get our strength. God can be our defense. God, I've had too much. I just need you to be my defense right now. So then we take and we claim it. We go to God and say, God, you are my victory. God, you are my, you are my banner. And we march into that battle. We say, this is who's fighting for me. This is who's fighting for me. I know I'm weak and I know I'm weary, but boy, as long as I hold this up, I'm going to win this thing. As long as God's exalted, I'm going to win this thing. Yahweh Nisi, our banner. You know, and it almost demands the question, well, what banner are we fighting under? What are we lifting high? What are we running to in the midst of storms? Is it money? Do we hold up our bank statement and go, oh, I can get through this. I got enough money. I'm good. As long as I got this in the bank, I'm secure. I can get through anything as long as I can pay my way out of it. Maybe it's our sales. You know, this whole kick in the world that we're the powerful ones, and we need to gain our power, and we need to pave our own way, and we need to do it for ourselves. Like, I get having confidence. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, we're not the end-all, be-all. We need help in the battle. We still need God. Sure, be, 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 be our own person. Go out there in the world, but do it through God. Are we our own banner? Am I saying I'm strong enough, I can do it? Like I said, to a certain extent, that's good. But we have to be humble enough to realize that we can't do it without God. You know, sometimes sin's our banner. Sometimes we run to sin to, to find our rally point. Sometimes we run to our sin to try to get us out. Well, sin's the thing that got us in there, and now we run to the same thing that got us in there to try to get us out. And that's called the downward spiral. Maybe it's an ungodly person in the world, and we're following their teachings. Maybe we got the new self-help book. Oh, I read the new book so-and-so put out. I got it. I'm going to make it through this. Oh, I seen what that influencer put online this morning. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff right there. I seen the new worldly teaching that goes against the principles of God in the Bible, and I'm going to hold on to that. This is what the world says I need to do. I know it's against God, but I don't care. I'm going to hold that up. I'm going to follow that and see how it works out for me. I don't care what none of them got to say. I don't care what any influencer got to say. I don't care what Dr. Phil. I don't care what Oprah. I don't care what the president got to say. I don't care what the dude who runs China got to say. God's in charge. God's the warrior king, and he's the one we need to be following. He's our banner, and he's the one who's going to lead us to victory. 
Right? There's nothing in this world more powerful than God. They can't even get to his throne. They can't defeat him. They can try to kill Christianity, but they can't because Christianity ain't tied up in the people. It's tied up in Jesus, and you can't kill Jesus. Our God is the warrior king, and he's the one who's fighting for us. Like I said, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but, some trust in, but we trust in the name of our God because they're going to fall, but we're going to stand. Because the last point about what a banner does shows a show a banner shows a victory already won. A victory already won. When the army would win a battle, they would go, they take their banner, and they find a hill and they put it up high and they say, Hey guys, don't worry about it. Stop fighting. We won. We got it. We won this victory. So here's the thing, the Israelites, they were never the underdogs. They were never in jeopardy of losing because they had God on their side. They had something the enemy didn't have. They had the Lord Almighty, the victory. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, took on our sins, the banner of God was lifted high. The banner of God was lifted high. I am defeating all sin, all death, all addiction, all everything in this world you're going to struggle with. Here's the banner of God. Here's your rally point. Here's your victorious king. Here's what you need to remember. Pick up that banner and remember. God's already got me through this battle once. I know he can do it again. Because here's the thing. Jesus defeated the greatest battle we'll ever fight, and that is going to hell, basically. Being separated from him for eternity. If he can defeat that battle, he can defeat anything on earth. Our job is to surrender and quit fighting against him. When God fights our battles for us, stop going back the other way. The sooner we surrender and do things God's way, the sooner we get peace. That's how it works. As long as we're fighting against God and we're doing things our way and he's trying to fight the other way, we're trying to fight that way, yeah, we're going to stand in the middle of battle and we're going to feel defeated and we're going to feel confused. But as soon as we surrender to God, run to his banner and trust in the name of our Lord, quit trusting in horses and chariots, quit trusting in our devices, our schemes, things of this world, we could trust things of this world and start trusting in the name of our God, knowing that he has victorious power at his right hand. God is our warrior king. Remember that, the God of angel armies. Remember, we talked about angels. They're set up in an army-style fashion. Why? Because there's a battle, and guess who the runner is? Guess who the ruler is? God. God runs that show. He delivers the instructions. The angels surrender to his will and carry it out as he sees fit. But God's the king. So I don't know what battles we're fighting today. I don't know what's going on in our life today. But we have a banner we can run to. We have something that God's already provided. Remember we talked about the horn. It was Jesus the whole time. Every single thing the horn represents in the Old Testament refers to Jesus. Jesus is our banner. Been lifted high. He's the rally point. To trust him to go to him, to surrender. He is our Yahweh Nisi. He is our king. So we hold our banner high. We trust God. We keep going in the battle. Don't quit. Don't surrender. Keep marching. Raving that high to the enemy. Let me show you the king that represents me. I'm going to show you who's fighting for me. I'm hiding underneath his banner. He's my defense. He's my stronghold. He's my salvation. He's my strong tower. He's my rock of salvation. He's my Yahweh Nisi. So surrender. Right? We can go to him today. Trust him. Surrender. We may not have all the answers. Sometimes we don't need an answer. Sometimes we just need his presence. We just need that hope in a future. We just need to soak up his presence and get that peace that he's with us. 
It's not always an action we need to go to. Sometimes it's inaction. Sometimes it's stop doing things. You're messing everything up. Just stop. Soak me up. Just come to me. And let's try it again. Rally to me. Find your strength. Find your hope. Find your defense. Find your salvation. And then we'll go back at it. Then we can pick up the sword and we can try again. But as for right now, just stop. Rally to me. Let me be your banner. Let's pray. Our great God, our warrior king, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord of hosts, the one who goes before us, the one who fights for us. Jesus, you knew this world was going to be tough. Jesus, you knew that we were going to struggle and we were going to fight battles ever since the first bite was taken from that fruit. And God, you could have left us alone. You could have let us struggle, but you didn't. You stayed with us the whole time, and you're with us now. And so, God, you see us in our struggles. You see us in our battles, our relationships, our finances, our, our, our health, our self-esteem. Our, our dealings with other people, God, just the stress of life. Jesus, you say, I, when I was on that cross, I was the banner. Come to me. And what's so awesome, Jesus, you didn't stay on the cross. You rose again in defeat, in, to defeat everything and stand in victory. God, our enemy is a powerful one. He's more powerful than us, but what's so awesome is you're more powerful than our enemy. Because our enemy fights from defeat, but you fight from victory. So, God, let us come to you today. Let us soak up your presence. God, let us, let us show the world. Let us highly exalt you that you are our king and that we identify with you, God, and that we run to you as a rally point. And let us remember, God, what you did in the past, especially on the cross. If you're loving and willing enough to go to a cross for us, then you're loving and willing enough to help fight for us. But help us to surrender and hear you in our battles, God. Maybe we need to take a different direction. Maybe we need a new plan of action. So, God, as we come to you right now, we're going to clear out everything in our minds. Nothing else exists. We trust you. And right now, the only thing that exists is your presence and your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, to speak to our minds. So, God, let us feel that peace. Let us get that Sabbath rest. Let us claim you as our horn, our strength, and our refuge. As we soak up your presence now. And help us as we continue until one day you bring us home. And we don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. It's all perfect peace and love everything we're looking for. So help us as we navigate this crazy world to find your will and surrender. We thank you, Lord. We love you. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.